Hey, so I was going to do this video about um, kind of the kind of writing you need to do for this format assignment, but I realized it might be make more sense just to do a walkthrough of writing a draft of it. So we'll see. Um, anyway, so let's get to it or else it'll take forever. So I chose this. This isn't one of the articles that, um, you know, y'all have an option to do, but I chose this and this is from... Um, Look, I have the name The Science of Learning blog, so that's that source overall, right? And then here's the date, and then the article title, and the author. So I'm just going to do, I do a lot of copying and pasting at first, and I'm doing, um, if you're in paste, you can do the paste um, plain, and that keeps it all plain. And then I'm going to highlight and select the big A, little a, um, will capitalize each word. And there'll still be some, like my grammar check is showing me, don't capitalize that. And then, you know, about those. So I'm going to leave that there. And that way I have that information because later I'll need that to cite it. But the first thing I really do, I've already read the article. Um, and so one of the first things that I often do is, um, let me just kind of get these here, um, is... I've already read the article, so I'm familiar with the whole thing. And that's the very first thing you should do is read it through. Okay. And then reread the assignment so that you know what to do. So here, um, we are, wait, oh, where'd it go? <laughs> um, we are, we can go right here and we'll find the APA format assignment. So remember that it's really basically two things. I mean, we've got the citation and the format, but in terms of the con con content, first paragraph, summarize the article you've read in 150 words, okay? Make sure and use that how to write a summary, and so we're going to look at that. Use at least one quote and an in-text citation in your summary. And so remember, using quotes is nice because you don't have to come up with all the words, but if you put too many, that's a bad thing. Then your reader will just say, why didn't you just give me a copy of the article? I could have read it myself. Okay, so it's this balance between those two things. So that's what we're going to work on. Um, that how to write a summary and go through and read this because it does step by step walk you through, you know, as you read it, read the article. Um, then tells you what to start with, how to do. And these things, I really, I'm looking for these things specifically in your um response. So, okay, so let's look at this. So what I do after I read is I usually say, let me just look at paragraph by paragraph and see what I pull out, what are the main things I want to pull out. So this is all about little known truths about reading out loud. So something usually associated with children, um, a remedial technique, but research suggests that reading out loud may have significant cognitive benefits, even for experienced readers. So really, that is just kind of one of the really key things there. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. But one of the things I'm going to do before I go anywhere else is notice this doesn't have any sections. So I'm going to make sure and put what paragraph it's in. So this is paragraph one. So I'm going to go ahead and put para one. Now, I may paraphrase this, and I may not need to do a natural citation there, but it is a pain in the butt to go back later and look for those if you do need that citation. So one of the key things when you're writing and using a source is just jot down right where it came from if you cut and paste a um, quote or something like that, or even if you write the paraphrase, just put it in there real quick. Get First thing you do is look at it and say, Am I going to use page numbers, paragraph numbers, or paragraphs and sections? This one's a website blog, so I don't have those page numbers. There are no section, you know, subheadings, so I don't have those. So I'm strictly paragraph numbers here. So if you make that note as you go along, it makes your life a lot easier. Okay. Um, recent study conduct conducted um, by researchers. So um, here found that reading words aloud made them easier to remember compared to reading silently. Okay, so really the main point there is this, right? So I'm going to go in here and say this. Whoops. I'm going to paste plain. And this is 
para 2. So paragraph 2. Here we go. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Doesn't mean you should replace your audio books. Okay. So um, the main point here, like I said, I've read this before, is that memory retention was strongest when reading aloud directly. The impact came from not just hearing words, but speaking those. And actually reading this out loud helps me because I know like right now, this is, I'm probably not going to quote this whole thing. I'll probably paraphrase, but this part like really to me had like the biggest punch. So it helped me think about what I want to leave as a quote and what I don't want to leave as a quote. Um, verbally pronouncing a word creates a memorable experiment experience a phenomenon the researchers call the production effect. I might want this. I don't know. Maybe. Whoops. Again. Paste playing. Um, it encodes it. Oh, it also helps encode it into your long-term memory. I mean, that's definitely something to um, pay attention to. Right? Um, students will be able to on their own voice. Hearing one's own voice provides a distinct stimulus of self-recognition, which makes it more memorable. Okay, really overall, in terms of this paragraph, those are the main points that, um, you know, I'm thinking, if I'm really thinking about why this reading out loud is helpful for memory and retention. Um, and then it talks about previous research, and what stood out for me here was that, um, a mixed list, yes, yeah, another study um, next next to them. Really, what stands out here is in this in this case, I'm just going to put it in my own words. Is you know, previous studies have also shown this. Some um, tested reading silently. Wait, hold on. Um, oh, eh, that's not that, let's see, having another person um, read to them, oh, okay, the, yeah, okay, so um, they showed that having someone else read to us is, um, not as powerful as our reading out loud ourselves. Really, that's what that kind of comes down to. So that's going to be me. And just because I want to make sure I don't forget that's me, I'll do that, right? Um, and then this one um, I thought was interesting. Um, you know, reading in their head. Students were asked to read words aloud to another, with another person in a room. Um, one study was especially interesting. See, I put that in because this was like what stood out to me. It was especially interesting to me, and you'll understand why in a minute. Um, period. It showed that, um, let's see. Students were asked to read words out loud to another person in the room. This proved to have the greatest impact on improving verbal recall. Unlike hearing another voice pronouncing the same words, the presence of the silent audience did not detract from personal distinctiveness of the production effect, but served to enhance it by placing the pronunciation into a specific context of interpersonal communication. And that's what I thought was interesting, and that's just because I do that a lot, right? I read samples to you. I show you how things work in writing, and I was like, wow, you know, and, and I know. I mean, as a teacher, I'm like, yeah, I remember those things. Not just because I've done them over and over. I can do it once, and I remember it better. And I think there is something when you've got an audience and things are at stake, you know, there's kind of something there. So I'm going to copy all of that, and then I'm going to, I'm going to put quote marks there. And then I'm going to say, oh, dude, not that. <laughs> I'm going to say this, place pain, plain, and then I'm going to put, um, 
and then I'm gonna I've forgotten what paragraph this is I'm gonna make it smaller so that I can look just this is how I do that to count quickly one two three four five six okay and that way I um, I know I was on paragraph six so um, six okay um, so there's that one and then at the end by engaging our motor system of self-recognition speaking words aloud encodes them as unique experiences forming additional memory pathways that's kind of nice I might want to use that I might not um, you know I might just summarize that put that in my own words um, so at this point here we go now I have and that was paragraph seven right so that was the last one there copy and so now I know just fix that and say seven okay so now first of all what do I have I have just mostly a bunch of quotes right this part is the only part that's me okay so now there's 214 words here so I'm way over my 150 um, that I need for this first paragraph so I want to narrow this down and I don't want the whole paragraph like I said before to be all quotes but this lets me read through these major things and say what does this all add up to okay now one of the things that how to write a summary um, talks about is it points out start your summary with clear identification of the type of work title author and main point in the present tense so in the article boom we treat that title correctly the author whoop, boom there's that date explains his opinion about different types of reading that's your basic this is what this is about so here we go in the article and we're going to remember APA has weird rules for the references citations but in the in the text of the paper if it's the little thing the article the essay the blog post oh wait that wasn't an article it's a blog post right um but whatever it is right we put that in quotation marks to show it's that title of the small thing if it's the big thing the whole website the whole blog the whole book the whole newspaper magazine we put that in italics to show people that's what it is so in your paper when you're doing your writing always treat those titles correctly and you capitalize major words okay um, for the references page at the end we follow APA's instructions as about to say destructions I feel that way about them sometimes okay so here we go um, about reading out loud comma okay in the article we could call it an article too because it's a blog it's an article on a blog either way um, and then we know this is from um, well, in the article on the science, oh wait, it's the website, science of learning blog, comma, the little known truth about reading out loud, um, Hendrix, and I spelled that wrong, just copy and paste. And this is 2008, see there's the date. So there we go, boom, 2018, whenever I use Hendrix, I got to put that in there and APA only uses last names in the article on the science science of learning blog um, the little known truth about reading aloud Hendrix discusses research what research has found about the benefits of reading out loud and how that can help us um, remember and retain information for longer I don't know if it's that I can't spell or I can't type that one spell this one type okay all right I'm gonna go ahead and put in my tab just because it's bugging me okay um, here we go I can say he says or he notes that oh dude research suggests that reading out loud may actually have significant cognitive benefits now notice here I don't have his name remember in the in-text citation I've got to have author date location so I'm gonna go ahead and take this because I'm 
lazy and I'm going to copy and paste so that I have Hendrix change that to a comma 2018 comma paragraph one boom and make sure and oh in my quote put in my citation and then the period at the end okay so uh oh I have an extra space there okay so what do I have so far this gives me 64 words Okay, I need some more, obviously. So what are, but 64, I'm pretty close to there, right? Um, because I know, like, I really know I like this, okay? Let me see what's in between here. Reading words aloud made them easier to remember. I can really kind of put that in my own words, right? In fact, that's kind of hard to say a different way. Um, this would be, I would say that something like this, well, like I would say out loud. Now, this isn't a paraphrase because a paraphrase does more than just changing word by word. That's called patchwork plagiarism or something like that. Um, but the thing is, when you have a, a sentence or something that it's like, that's how we would say it. It's not like that unique. I mean, it's like, no, that's the wording I, most anybody would use. Reading out loud, you know, showed was more effective than reading silently. Reading out loud, words out loud that made them easier to remember compared to reading silently. Okay, look, there's my reading out loud was more than reading silently. Boom, there's my, you know, it's a paraphrase. Um, Let's see, studies show that reading, and I may change that again, I may have that too much. Okay, so that I don't really feel obligated to cite there because one, it is a paraphrase, and if you paraphrase, you don't have to cite. I generally encourage you to when, you know, it's closer to what you're saying, if you have any kind of, if you have any kind of statistic, number, some like, you know, hard fact, then go ahead and put that cite in-text citation in there so people can go and find that directly, okay? Especially with those. With other things, with other paraphrases, it really is up to you. I feel like this is one of those sentences that is just kind of duh, that's the way we'd say it, so I'm really not that worried about, I don't really think that can be construed as plagiarism. Um, Let's see. However, and this is just, you know, from my memory, so I read it. That's what a summary is. Um, this, these studies showed that it's not about just hearing the words and information. Comma, it's about actually our actually reading them so that we read and hear them coming from ourselves. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but I'll worry about that later. So, okay, cool. Notice what makes this formal sounding. I haven't said I. I've said we, us, our. Some people aren't okay with that, okay? But, you know, learn to master the no I, me, my, no you, no you, okay? And if you get rid of those things, already it sounds more formal. So, all right. So I kind of got that um, verbally pronouncing the words creates a memorable experience. Ooh, I like that. Coming from ourselves. Watch, then I can do this. When I have a, remember, when I have a full sentence, so that I had a period there, it was a fine sentence, but then I want to give a quote that kind of explains it or illustrates it, then I can put that colon. Got to have the full sentence first, okay? Don't forget that. But I can put this colon and make sure, put those quote marks, okay? And then I got to come back and I got to have all of this, right? It's just going to be paragraph five now. Right, so Hendrix space paragraph five and then period there. Okay, um, whoa, 
I think I I'm gonna look up encode over here so where's my article find encode also speaking words aloud encodes speaking let's see Oh, that's all I wanted was just the speaking words aloud, right? Helps to encode um, that. That, okay, <laughs> yeah. Oops, make sure, paste plain, okay? Because that disruption like that um, is problematic. Now notice we've got quote, this whole thing's a quote, right? So I'm gonna put quote there, not after the citation, but there's also quotes here. One of them fix this because this should be after that. And remember, double on the outside, single on the inside. So I've got a quote inside the quote. And I'm going to ask if I need that. Um, verbally pronouncing a word creates a more memorable experience. Okay, hold on. The active cognition of encoding words, oh, also helps to encode it into long-term memory. Oh, okay, I got the wrong one. Um, you know what I want to do? I want to do this, watch. Long-term memory, okay. That's what this should be. So here we go. You need to double check your, I mean, double check your, your quotes, even copying and pasting. Verbally pronouncing a read creates a memorable experience. This is great to know, interesting, but I don't really need it, right? So I can do this. I'm going to show people I changed the, the quote. Period, space, period, space, period gives me my ellipses. Oh, wait. And then I'm going to say, and close the brackets. Now, I've showed people I took out a few words, and then I make this flow grammatically. Verbally pronouncing a word creates a memorable experience and helps to encode it into long-term memory. There we go, just like that, okay? Um, let's see, let's see. In fact, comma, the studies, the studies, and this was the one. Oh, that was me, right? Oh, okay, cool. Look, I can unhighlight this. Ooh, no color, right? I've already written this. In fact, the studies showed that having someone else read to us is not as powerful as our reading out loud ourselves. One study was especially interesting. It showed that to have the greatest impact on verbal recall, um, Oh, it showed that reading out loud in front of people to an audience. Here, I'll, here I'll use those dashes. Uh, maybe to an audience had, and then here I'll go ahead and the greatest impact on. And see, I'm changing words but I'm not changing meaning on improving verbal recall. Um, and then here I want to delete this. I want to just say, look, I left out the first of that there. The presence of a silent audience did not detract from the personal distinctiveness of the production effect, but served, served to enhance it by placing pronunciation to a specific context of interpersonal communication. So, um, the presence of the si silent audience didn't do this, but did that thing, right? So I'm just getting rid of this, didn't do this. Now, notice I am one, I don't want this to be separated, right? If I separate that from, if it starts the line, that's wrong, okay? And if it is separated from that word that way, that's wrong. So here I put them all together. 
So in just to maintain consistency and visual consistency, I did that. Now, again, I'm not using these. You notice here, I left off the first part of this sentence. I didn't use the ellipses because it's at the first. If it's at the first or the end, you don't need to have the um, ellipses, okay? Um, so that's what, um, just use those when you get rid of stuff in the middle of sentences. Um, you know, I, this is great, but I think I can say it just as good. Um, in the end, um, Hendrix 2018, author date, um, shows the power of reading out loud ourselves of reading out loud when we want to um, really learn and retain T-A-I-N information. Okay, boom, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, one other thing I have to do. Look, I have paragraph six, but not the rest of this, which is that. Let me put this in single space so it's a little easier to read because this is all mushed together. Okay, let's see how many words I got now. I bet you I got a gazillion words. I've got 224 words. Okay, I'm going to just make sure I've got double space, zero, zero, don't add space between paragraphs, same style. Okay, there we go. In the article on the Science of Learning blog, the little-known truths about reading out loud, Hendricks discusses what research has found about the benefits of reading out loud. Oh, it's a little repetitive, right? What research has found about that and how that and how it can help us remember and retain information for longer. He notes that research suggests that reading out loud may actually have significant cognitive benefits, even, and I'm not supposed to have space, or he, he's not to, you can fix, you know, the other stuff without having to say, I fix this. So like the italics needed or moving the quotes. Okay, he notes that research suggests that reading out loud may actually have significant cognitive benefits even for experienced readers. And then boom, Hendrix, 2018, paragraph one, author, date, location, my period goes at the end, okay? Studies show that reading out loud is more effective than reading silently. However, these studies show that it's not about just, I'm gonna put not, come on, just that word, not just about, hearing the words and information, it's about our actually reading them so that we read and hear them coming from ourselves. And then boom, here's my quote. Verbally pronouncing a word creates a memorable experience and helps to encode it into long-term memory. In fact, the study showed that having someone else read to us is not as powerful as our reading out loud ourselves. One study was especially interesting. It showed that reading out loud in front of people to an audience, oh, that's my extra information, so I need commas on both sides there, and watch, I'll make it go from the two to the one, get rid of the extra space. One study was especially interesting. It showed that reading out loud in front of people to an audience had the greatest impact on improving verbal recall. The presence of a silence audience served to enhance it by placing the pronunciation into a specific context of interpersonal communication. In the end, Hendricks shows the power of reading out loud when we want to really learn and retain information. Here, I just summed up his whole thing. I don't actually need, the only time I need that date in there is if I'm gonna give a quote or direct paraphrase. So if I'm like giving his, you know, the littler ideas, the whole thing, no, okay, because we already said it's the whole thing. Now, there is one more thing that I want to take care of here. I want to double check, and let me make this a little bit smaller because I want to highlight this whole quote, okay? 29 words. Okay, remember if it had been 40, 
I would want to definitely indent it. And that's where you go and you check out, you know, um, APA, well, writing down the basics. Here we go. Let's go right here. You go to writing down the basics, go to that page four, scroll down to the APA, and then in-text citations, um, punctuating them. Make sure you look at those. Um, the basics, let's see. Let's give us our long quotes. Nope, it doesn't. Oh, indirect. Oh, okay. If you're using, you're quoting, if you're quoting somebody who was in the source, then how do you do that? That's the indirect one. So if you decide to do that, use that. Um, organizations, remember that if you have, um, if you don't have an author, then instead of like saying Hendrix, we'd say Open Polytechnic In Institute. The Open Polytechnic Institute says they also point out another thing they bring up, right? And so then that becomes our author. Um, but here, this is on the punctuating page, and it's mentioned above, but this is a good, um, shows you good, a good visual. 40 words or less than just what we did. It goes in with it. If you have more than 40 words, then you're going to do that indented, okay? So you enter and then indent it. Okay, so if, if this was more than 40 words, we'd, we'd get rid of the, um, I'm going to indent there, right? I'd get rid of the, the tab there, and I'd get rid of the quote marks too, because indenting it shows it's a quote, okay? All right, so what I did was I just wrote a very good summary. Now all I have to do is write that, I have to do two more, well, three more things, write that paragraph about how I'm going to use that, and in this case, like I say in the assignment, I want you in the second paragraph, go ahead and say I. You know, think about how it applies, not just to this class, but any of them. So, you know, I would talk about how I would use this for, you know, for work. For me, it's not school, it's work. But how can I use this to help me? Um, and like, I'd want to think about what things am I forgetting? And then, okay, be specific. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to read out loud more. Yeah, whatever. Well, what classes and what things? And, you know, in that, you know, I might also might bring up when I was talking about how I'd use it is that, you know, they said that if you just read everything out loud, it doesn't necessarily help that much. It's about reading those parts you want to, you know, know and you need to retain. So if I were a student, I'd talk about, you know, I'm going to make sure and, you know, do my highlighting and my notes and then I'll make sure and read my notes or quotes that I pull out that have certain information out loud. Okay, and then I've got to cite it at the end. So let's look at that real quick. I'm going to pull this, and then my final step would be, you know, setting this up in APA format. Okay, and I'm not going to title this Little Known Truths About Reading Out Loud. I'm going to give this my own spiffy title, right? So maybe I'll call this, um, you know, um, Read Out Loud. Um, helpful beyond fifth grade. Uh, uh, something like that. I don't know, right? And of course, the new APA says put that in bold. And then um, I can go down here. Um, and then I'm going to have my one. Well, we're going to put this in bold references and make sure that you're starting just on that first line right there. Okay, so what do I need? Well, let's look. I have this open. This is a blog post, so I did go to, it's under the um, other or electronic sources. So blog and right here. So it's a blog post. So what I need is this. Here's how I do it a lot of times. I'll just go to my writing down the basics or the um, Purdue out like I really do this when I even when I'm helping students and I paste that in and so then I can go okay boom Hendrix okay and his first name was Dylan D okay I did that right your month date I don't have oh I do have that so 2018 and then March 7 okay so I can copy that Okay, title of post. The title of the post is Little Known Truths About Reading Out Loud. Now I'm going to have to go back and look at this because, whoops, no space there. Publisher is the Science of Learning blog. Okay, 
Okay, no space there. I'm going to have to get the URL, but I think one of these, oh, publisher is in italics. So here, the website name is in italics. Okay, italics, and then let me go get that URL. So right here, the whole thing. Come on. Some days. <laughs> okay. Um, just like that. And then the last thing I have to do, get rid of all of this stuff, is I have to put it in hanging indent. Paragraph, special, hanging. Okay. Boom. That looks just like a citation. That is a citation. Um, so anyway, and then of course, like I said, you know, control A and there's my, if I decided on my title, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do all of my, um, the, <laughs> all of my um, stuff for my format to format correctly, put all of my other stuff on the title page, put in my page number, and then of course I'll have, I'll be adding in, you know, my paragraph um, beneath here that is, you know, what I, what I'm going to do, right? So that second part of it. And control, enter, boom, hard page, okay? Make sure don't just um, space down, right? Hmm. Let's see, why did that get single space all of a sudden? Control, enter, or insert, page break. Boom, just like that, okay? Keeps it down there, okay? So anyway, um, I hope that was helpful. That I know it was long, but that's me showing you how to do that. And that's exactly what I would do. And so what I want you to think about, though, is the writing there. That, yeah, I used Hendrix words, and I made sure and gave those quotes and put that citation in. But my words were my words, and they weren't especially fancy. I mean, I didn't put in, I put in some however, but, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, I didn't say I think or another thing I liked. You can write that in your draft. Just get rid of it. Another thing I liked was the point he made about reading to an audience. Boom. And he makes a point about reading to an audience. All of a sudden, there you go. Okay? So um, it's practice. Turn it in. Do it thoughtfully. It's like the MLA assignment. Do it. Follow the instructions. Read that how to write a summary slowly and carefully because I did things in there you're supposed to do just because I know, because I wrote that. Okay, um, read that slowly and carefully. Do those things. Um, use your quotes. Use your in-text citation. Make sure it's not all one big long quote. You know, you should be able to find some of you in there too. And when we look at this, you know, if we go in and we highlight, we'll just highlight the quotes, right? So we know here's quote. Um, let me go back to home here. And this... And then here's, okay, so there's quote. Right, here's another one. Okay. Quote. Okay. Now look at this. That shows that I'm doing, I mean, some of this is I'm paraphrasing, right? But it shows I'm not just full of quotes. So before you finish up, you might want to go through there and do that and just make sure that I'm not just going to say, yeah, I read the article. Okay, put it in your words, right? I mean, I want to see you interpreting that. So anyway, okay, enough of this. It's been long enough. Thank you for your time. If you're still here, yay you. You'll do better. Um, let me know if you have questions. Take care of yourself. And as always, keep on keeping on.